let us discuss comet a case study in fatigue it is a very very interesting case study which will throw light on the role of fatigue in the aviation industry. Comet was the first turbo powered passenger commercial aircraft. Commercial passenger aircraft its cruising speed was supposed to be 50 percent higher than the other aircraft operating at that time and its altitude cruising altitude was 10.7 kilometers higher than Mount Everest which was double of the um, aircraft which was operating at that time. And because the altitude was so high at higher altitude the pressure will be very low. So, the cabin pressure will go down. So, for the first time pressurized cabins were introduced and an internal pressure difference in pressure difference between inside and outside was 56 kilo Pascal. This was to make oxygen available to the passenger and keep them comfortable. But the history of this comet aircraft turned out to be very tragic. So, the first inaugural flight took, uh, took place on 2nd May 1952. This was from London to Johannesburg and uh, then exactly after one year on the very first anniversary the first crash took place and it took place 6 minutes after takeoff from Kolkata in India. 43 people died, but somehow the company the aircraft company did not take this very very seriously and they assigned the cause for the failure to be a tropical storm in the Bay of Bengal. The fact that they did not take it very seriously uh, is also obvious from the that on 30th June soon after uh, a month after uh, this accident Queen Elizabeth was taken in a special flight. Then 10th January 1954 another crash happened near Elba Islands in Mediterranean Sea 30 minutes after the takeoff from Rome 35 people died. Then another flight from Rome on 8th April 1954 crashed in sea 30 minutes after the takeoff from Rome. So, after a series of such accidents the airworthiness of this uh, new aircraft was being questioned and people started getting worried. So, investigation committees were set up and they started investigating soon after this last uh, crash on 12th April 1954 certificate for airworthiness of this aircraft was withdrawn. Then one of the worries the question was why these crashes are taking place. So, one of the reason which was proposed by some people it was at that time not fully established that fatigue can be an important mechanism of failure of aircraft. So, some people proposed fatigue, but there were other, other people who thought fatigue should not be important in the failure of aircraft and they were looking for other reason particularly the aircraft company and the aircraft manufacturers themselves were looking for other reason. Why should fatigue be a, there in an aircraft operation? So, let us look at that <coughs> from the takeoff when the aircraft takes off at the ground level and let us look at the aircraft body this circle assume this circle to be representing the aircraft cabin. So, the outside pressure I told that at the high altitude the outside pressure was very low, but inside pressure will be high to keep the passengers comfortable. So, there will be a pressure differential delta p created between the inside pressure and the outside pressure. This pressure will stress the cabin or the air stress the aircraft body. So, stresses will be produced in the aircraft body due to the pressure difference, but then 
when when the aircraft was at ground there was no pressure difference because inside and outside both was atmospheric pressure so delta p was zero but when it reached its cruising altitude there there will be a finite delta p and we saw that for comet aircraft this was 56 kilo pascal so a 56 kilo pascal pressure will generate as the aircraft takes off and reaches its cruising altitude at the cruising altitude the pressure is const the pressure differential is constant but then again when it lands when the aircraft lands the pressure difference will go back to delta p equal to 0 so in each takeoff in each takeoff and landing pressure will go from 0 to 56 k mm, uh, kilopascal and back to 0 so each takeoff and landing is one cycle of fatigue takeoff plus landing is one you can say one loading cycle but engineers and investigators were of different uh, uh, were of differing views that time some thought that this kind of pressurization and depressurization cycle will lead to fatigue failure of the aircraft body some thought it would not be in fact the company itself the aircraft company tested a small piece from the um, aircraft of the aircraft material and declared that fatigue is not a problem but the investigators of the crashes were not convinced so they decided to do a full scale simulation test on fatigue a full scale fatigue simulation test on 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 comet so this this is a very historic uh, simulation test in aviation uh, history and in fact in engineering history because the whole aircraft was taken as a test specimen so the entire aircraft was supposed to be tested for fatigue you have seen that a pressure difference of 56 kilo pascal gets generated when the flight is at the cruising altitude to create this pressure difference it was decided to pressurize the cabin of the aircraft so by sealing all the doors and windows it was made uh, leak proof and then it would be filled with a fluid to pressurize it air is not a good pressurizing fluid because air is highly compressible and to generate this pressure lot of air will be compressed so finally if the failure takes place this compressed air will expand and the whole aircraft will explode like a bomb so air air was not used instead a non compressible fluid like water incompressible fluid like water was used so water does not compress so much so it will be able to generate this pressure with only a small amount of compression so when a final explosion or a final breakage takes place it will not really be like a explosion but how to generate this pressure so the doors and windows were sealed and made water tight and water was supposed to be pumped into the cabin however this created another problem water is a heavy liquid so the whole aircraft filled with water is an enormous load on the aircraft structure the aircraft was not designed for this load so this means that this load which was not really there in uh, the actual flight will be there if we try to create this pressure difference by water this was countered by a very interesting design that the whole aircraft was sealed in a 
watertight tank. So you can imagine the scale of the test. So actual water tank was created to totally enclose the aircraft except for its wing, otherwise the size of the tank will become too big and wings are not important, it is cabin which is being pressurized and you have to of course make it watertight with seals. And this, this tank was also filled from water outside the cabin. So now, since water is both inside and outside, the extra load of water will not be felt on the aircraft um, cabin material, aircraft body. With this test, it was found, an uh, aircraft was selected with 12, eight, which had done 1230 flights before the test. So, pre test flight, let me write it here. Pre test flights, the aircraft had already done 1230 successful flights. And in the simulation, each pressurization depressurization cycle will uh, cause we will cause stresses equivalent to one flight. So, the number of cycles were increased and it was found that after 18, after 1830 flights or 1830 cycles of test, cycles of fatigue test. So, in 1830 cycles, actually failure took place. So, this very, very important engineering test, a historic test established that fatigue actually can cause failure of the aircraft bodies. So, the total number of cycles to failure in this case turned out to be 3060. 2030 actual flights, mm, uh, when, the fly, the, when the aircraft was being used and 1830 test simulation cycles. So, 3060 cycles, fatigue cycles, the aircraft fail. This established beyond doubt that fatigue can be the cause and fatigue was the cause for these aircraft failures. Another thing which was seen that the, when the broken aircraft in the simulation was investigated in detail, they found that the actually there were square windows for certain antennas and cracks propagated from the corner of the square windows. We have already discussed this, the square windows are dangerous from a stress concentration point of view and the corners of the square windows create a stress concentration from where the crack propagates. So, nowadays you have, uh, we have uh, mentioned this before that the new design, the uh, no aircraft has square windows, has either circular or oval windows to reduce this stress concentration. Windows to avoid stress concentration. <coughs> 